well, just don't eat too much. Just don't overeat. It's not that hard. I don't eat for hours. Why do you feel like you have to eat all the time? We're walking and talking. We're walking and talking. We're walking and talking. We're walking and talking with Helen Ryan. Hi, walkers. If you're walking outside with me, just pick up that warm up pace. If you're doing this indoors, just march in place. If you're on the elliptical or whatever else you might be doing, just start out at a warm up pace right now. Deep breath in through your nose, exhale through your mouth. I think if you walk with me, a lot. You're like, I already know. Yeah, yeah. She's going to tell me to start at a moderate pace. Well, that's what I do because I'm reminding you. And it's also for the new people. Hold on to a warm up pace, deep breath. Shake out those hands. Today, we're going to talk about why I overate and why I sometimes still do. Now, this is a little more personal episode. And if you are triggered by certain things, which I will put in the show notes just in case, um, then You may want to skip and go to a different episode, but I'm going to explain a little bit why I've I've been doing more podcast guesting. Is that even a word? I'm guesting? No, I am guesting. I'm a guest on podcasts. I did two recently where I talked about my past and in one of them I said, well, this is why I would eat. And it reminded me like, this is why I would eat. And I need to share that. I need to share that with people. So pick up a little bit of pace now. We're going to go for about three minutes at a moderate pace just to get you just past the warm-up zone. I had a fairly difficult childhood, and in that childhood, I did not have a lot of people around me. I didn't have any support from parents. I felt alone. I felt lonely. My mother was an alcoholic. I lived with her in Norway. My father lived in the U.S., and he was a very kind person, he just was not a fighter. So he didn't fight for people. He didn't fight. He wouldn't fight for me when I ended up having to go to Norway with my mother. And she became an alcoholic. And she also had mental illness that was undiagnosed for many, 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 many years. Hold on to your pace. We've got two more minutes. She was suicidal. By the time I left at age 17, she had tried to commit suicide at least 12 times. She was taking prescription drugs. She was very promiscuous. She would always have men in and out of the doors and they would be, you know, coming into my room and and I kicked them out. But it was very difficult, very hard to live with someone who later was diagnosed with a borderline personality disorder. And other things that I'm sure were not diagnosed because she always had problems from when she was little. And nobody really knew because back then they didn't talk about it. We've got about another minute, just over a minute. Pick up a little bit of pace if you can. So I was very lonely. I had a couple of friends, but I felt sad. I felt lonely. And when things got really rough, when I was about 14 and things started to get even worse, was when I started to turn to food because food gave me comfort. It made me feel loved. It made me feel taken care of. It gave me that self-care feeling and that feeling of love that I didn't have. Food made me happy. And it was the only thing that I felt loved me at the time. Hold on to that pace. It was more the feeling that food gave me, the feeling of completeness, feeling of warmth. It took a while for me to figure out that that is exactly why I would overeat because of the feeling that it gave me. Not because I wanted to eat a lot of food, it was because of how it made me feel. Okay, we're going to just slow it down a tiny bit, not too much here. Shake out those arms, shake out your hands, relax your feet, try not to, I always say crunch, you know, crunch, <laughs> crunch your toes, unless you're accountable. Just relax those toes so you don't scrunch them. Scrunch is a much better word than crunch. Now we're going to pick up pace again, go a little bit faster longer period of time. The food was very important to me because of how it made me feel. And I think a lot of us feel the same way. I have a friend of mine who also, she's actually been really successful now in trying to lose weight, but she said food makes me happy. And it's the same thing because she didn't have a lot of love in her marriage. And so she used food because food gave her that same sense of comfort. So when people say like, well, just don't eat or don't, don't overeat. It's hard when that is 
the only thing maybe in life that gives you joy or makes you feel loved. Hold on to that pace. You're going to be brisk. Squeeze those glutes a little bit. Try to activate them. Your butt, the whole area there in the back, you want to squeeze it. It gets inactive when we sit a lot. So we're just going to try to activate it. Strong legs, shoulders back. I took a workshop for a certification and the guy was like, shoulders back, boobies up. And I always think of boobies up, boobies up, (laughs) except mine really, you know. They're going to be 56 next week and they're not always boobies up. Hold on to your pace still though, brisk. Feel the blood flowing, feel the oxygen flowing through your body. That's what we're here for. We're here to get that fresh oxygen in there and just move our bodies a little bit. So if you are the same way, if you feel the same way about food, know that you're not alone. Know that it is something that makes you feel good and you can find another way and you can get out of it. You may need some help from a counselor. I kind of did it on my own, although sometimes when I'm really stressed, I'll still go eat a bunch of chocolate, but it's not very often. Sometimes I just need a little bit of chocolate now to kind of take the edge off. I don't have to eat a bunch of it. I'm able to just have a piece of chocolate and it still makes me feel good without eating a bunch, but sometimes I still fall off the wagon. But you can take a bunch of steps right now and hold on to your pace. Just because you've lost weight doesn't mean that you don't fall off the wagon. I'm going to bet that a lot of people do, and they just won't admit it. Or maybe their thing is alcohol. I know a lot of people where I used to live, they would drink wine, drink wine, drink wine, drink wine. They could drink wine, but yet I wasn't allowed to eat chocolate. That doesn't make any sense. So their vice is a little bit different, but they have the same feelings inside. They just have a different way of handling it. We're going to slow it down a little bit here. Deep breath in. So that is my story with food. I turned to food for a huge portion of my life. I'm going to say since I was about 13 to about 36. And then I had a really good under control for about 10 years or so. And then occasionally I would just kind of slip off the wagon, slip off the wagon. So I've gone up and down. I go up and down like 15 pounds, depending on, you know, what I'm doing and what's going on and how I'm feeling. My kids eat chocolate and my son makes good bread and he makes good food and he makes pesto to die for. Okay, we're going to pick up a little bit of pace again. Be strong. Just chase my pesto. Just imagine you're seeing my son's pesto. Anyway, I'm done talking about the pesto. We're just talking about donuts or some other things that I adore so much. Just kidding. Hold on to your pace there. Deep breath in. Another thing that I didn't actually bring up that I kind of forgot in both of these guest appearances is that I liked being invisible. I think I brought that up in one of my previous podcast episodes, is I liked when I was overweight, it was invisible. I felt invisible because guys didn't see me. And I like that. I like that, I think, because my mother was very promiscuous, as I said, and and I wanted to feel safe. I didn't feel safe growing up. Nighttime was not a time where Helen was safe. And so a lot of it was because of the guys that she would have coming in and out. And I really liked that whole invisible feeling. Hold on to your pace. Be strong. Be visible. I want you to be visible right now. I want you to feel visible. I think, though, I do have funny stories, things that happen. We can laugh about it now. I've told my kids everything. Well, not everything, but (laughs) they know a big chunk of it. They're grown now, but I told them when they were a little bit younger, so they know what I went through because I wanted to be open with them and I wanted them to feel comfortable. Hold on to your pace. I wanted them to feel comfortable with things happen in their lives that they could then say, oh, something else happened to mom and maybe I could talk to her about it. Because it is hard when you, you think everybody's perfect and you don't realize that the kind of things that they've had go on in their lives. And you'd be surprised. Everybody has something different that happened to them, but there are some consistencies a lot. What's different is that how, what happened to people, how that comes out. What is the end behavior? And mine was food. Mine was eating. Some people have drinking. Some people gamble. Some people have a lot of sex. Slow your pace down now just a little bit. And mine was always sugar, cookies, pastries. They still make me incredibly happy, as you can tell. But I don't turn to it like I used to. I don't have that big hole inside anymore like I used to have. It was very, very difficult growing up. And I had to have something to keep me sane. And that was what I had was the food. The food helped me get through the really hard times and the candy and the chocolate and everything. 
because it was something for me. We're going to do something for you and we're going to pick up some intervals now. You're going to go faster for 45 seconds. When you can look forward to exercising like this and you can just feel how great it feels to move your body, that can help take the place of something else that maybe is less healthy. When I first lost weight and I got in better shape, I used to spin all the time. So I would start spinning my stress away instead of eating my stress away. You got 15 more seconds, hold on to it. I wasn't addicted to it. I just loved the feeling and it really gave me that feeling of strength. Hold on to five more seconds. Push it. Push it strong now. Three, two. And relax it just a little bit. That feeling of strength, that feeling of being, I guess I felt kind of cared for in a way because I would go to class and people would see me and it was just fun because I had friends there and, and we would chat and it was really good to go to that really small spinning studio. And I really felt like at home there. And I think that's one of the first places I felt at home. And so that really helped me get stronger and starting to fill up that hole that was inside me most of my life. We're going to go another 45 seconds because I'm not going to let you off easy today. Be strong. Keep those legs strong. If you're doing this inside, bring your arms up above your head. You can pull them down. You want to change you know, big movements in order to get that heart rate up. Go ahead and really push it now. Got 25 seconds. Only thing that's really tense right now is your butt, your thighs. Everything else is relaxed. You're going to breathe. Shoulders are down. Hands are soft. You're going to be strong. Pull that interval. We're almost there. Almost there. Hold on to it. Got three more seconds. Push it. Push it. Two, one. And release it. Relax a little bit. Not too slow. We're still working. Just not going to go those super fast sprints. One thing I did talk about in the interview the other day was the fact that sometimes when your life is all out of control, the only thing that you can control is what you eat or don't eat. I think that is probably a common thread with those of us who eat too much and anorexics is that they're controlling things through not eating. I was controlling things through eating. I don't beat myself up over it at all. I look at it now as like that was a coping tool for me and that's okay. It was something I needed at the time and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with, with having a crutch or something that you need to do at the moment, as long as you can at some point grow past it so it doesn't take over your life. For a long time, mine did take over my life, but then I finally got it to the point where it doesn't take over my life anymore. And once you can get to that point, you can still feel those little moments. You can have a glass of wine, you can have a piece of chocolate, but it's not an all-consuming need because that's what I had before. It was an all-consuming need to eat chocolate because I just had to do something to give myself some peace. We're going to pick it up now a little bit faster. Nice, strong, steady movements. Shoulders are down and relaxed. Hands are soft. The important thing is that we look back and we reflect and we grow and we change. And that's what life is about. Life is about growing and learning new things and not being mad at ourselves for what we've, we've done in the past. Just acknowledge it and then use that to not repeat those same things, but also use it to become more empathetic. My childhood gave me empathy and I am so grateful for the empathy. There might be something in your life that you are really grateful for that this, whatever you experienced, that gave you something and mine was empathy. Hold on to that pace. Deep breath in, squeeze those glutes, strong legs. Feel the freedom of walking. This is your time. This is your moment. Doesn't matter what happened before. Doesn't matter what's going to go on in the future. This is your moment. This is where you change. This is where you get stronger. This is where your life starts. Your new life starts right now. You're out there. You're doing it. You're changing things day by day, step by step. Hold on to that pace. You look at it like that. Look at it like an opportunity. Every time you go for a walk is an opportunity for something different. It's an opportunity for change. It's an opportunity to just get healthier and get stronger, mentally stronger. I want you to go faster now. Feel that strength inside. I know I say strength inside a lot, but you have unimaginable strength. Tap into that strength. 
Tap into your talents. Tap into your energy. Hold on to that pace now. You're going to push it. Push it, push it, push it real good. Got 20 more seconds. I want you to go even faster if you can. Deep breath in. Glutes are tight. Thighs are strong. But feet are relaxed. Shake out those hands. Breathe. Focus on your breathing now. Four more seconds. Three, two, one. And slow it down. Another deep breath in through your nose. Give yourself a pat on the back if you can. I don't know if I can reach my back. I hurt my shoulder almost two years ago. I can't plank on straight arms. I can't do my bra properly, so I cannot pat myself on the back. Slow it down a little bit more now. Deep breath in through your nose. Roll those shoulders back. Big rolls and big circles. Roll them forward. If you can commit to yourself to getting out there and walking, or if you're doing this while you're on the elliptical or an indoor bike, treadmill, commit to yourself. You have this little time for yourself where you can get some exercise, move your body, clear your mind, put your phone on, do not disturb, and just take that time for you. Take the time to walk. Take the time to reflect. It's better than counseling. You can just counsel yourself and think about things. Slow it down a little bit more. Make sure you stretch when you get back, especially your calves. And let's keep on kicking ass.